Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, and today we're going to talk about the Capture One Live feature, uh, which has been in beta for a few months now, and I've been using it, uh, but it has been uh, formally made into a real feature now, and will be coming out of beta. Uh, so I want to talk about uh, some of the ways that I've been using this, uh, some of the tips and tricks and so on, uh, so you can kind of get an idea of where it might best fit into your workflow. Uh, but I also talk about some of the gotchas here, some, some things that I did not expect, and uh, some things that work in a little bit of a quirky way. Uh, so let's get started. So first and foremost, if you don't have it active on your interface, you can simply right click on any header on any screen, add tool, and then find Capture One Live uh, beta and add that. Now it may not have beta for long here because as I said, it just went live, uh, but the idea is the same. And it's going to pop up this interface here. So what this basically does is it generates a website where clients can rate and or color code images that you upload. Uh, so it's really cool for being able to say to a client, hey, we just took these pictures, which ones do you love, which ones do you hate, and so on. Uh, and what's more interesting is that you can actually do this to a live capture folder. So if you are capturing images live, this will automatically update and upload those images to the website. There have been situations, especially during COVID, when I've been doing some product photography, which I do quite a bit of, and that team is not on site here. They usually ship me the product, I shoot it, and then I shoot them uh, the images that I have taken and say, is the lighting good? Are you happy with the angle? And all those other questions that a whole team of people has to make a decision on. So you've got your production manager, you've got your stylists, you've got all this kinds of stuff, depending on what you're shooting. And I really can't have just say one person come to the studio and guide that uh, as big corporations tend to make decisions as committees. Uh, so this has been really cool for that situation because as I shoot these, I can have them uploaded automatically and the client can take a look at them, star rate them, color grade them, and so on. And that has been great for great feedback when they're not local to me. And I don't want to use another website uh, where I have to upload photos and so on. Uh, so this has been pretty cool for that. And uh, I have to say that it is a really elegant solution specifically for that situation. I really like it. Uh, so first of all, the way this works is you're simply going to pick what it is that you want to uh, share up online. Now I have Images here that I shot at uh, Imaging USA. I did a pre-con and I, I also did a uh, platform speech. I've got all these other pictures I took when I was there. And uh, I'm going to just kind of use these. So don't worry about what the pictures actually are here, but uh, we're going to talk about this as if it were your solution. So here you're going to pick what collection you would like to uh, share online. So you pick the capture folder or the selects folder or your output location. So depending on what it is that you're doing, uh, this solution will work uh, well. However, I don't really feel this is uh, great for me personally because sometimes um, I don't want to share everything that's in the select folder. For example, here I have two different ladies that I had shot, uh, so I really don't want to share this. But where this does come in handy is that you can actually share a specific album. So if I go in here and I create a new album, let's just call this uh, online uh, because I'm not really going to use it for anything else. And say I want to give it to give these images here to this young lady. I can go ahead and, and create that album and create it as online here. Then when I go down to the collection and say, I want to share online and I hit start sharing. Now you can give it a password and I'll just call it test and hit start sharing. What that is going to do is it's going to upload the images to the web and we'll be able to view them. So when I pasted that link into my browser, this is what popped up. So I have to put the password in here and hit okay. And you're going to see that all of those images are now loaded in here. So a person could go through and star rate them. So I could say, well, I really like this one. And if you'd like, you can actually click on the image and it will give you a larger version and you can use your arrow keys to go through them. Uh, so we can actually star rate them. We can color grade them just like we would in any other application. If we go back to capture one, we should automatically see those star ratings and those colors automatically added to those images. Now here's the limitation of this. This link only lasts for 24 hours. After 24 hours, it's going to go away you're also given a quota of times that you can use it. So if you uh, click on this three dot menu and choose quota status, it'll show you how you're doing. So it shows you in the last 30 days, uh, I've used it uh, two out of the 25 shares that I had uh, for a total of 38 out of the 25,000 images I'm allowed to upload. So after this link expires, after 24 hours, or I click stop sharing, all of those images will be deleted. Now here's the caveat here is, let's say I have closed capture one and I'm on location, I'm doing another job and I come back to my workstation and this link has already expired. Uh, so obviously Capture One has deleted those images. When I open Capture One, if the client has color graded or star rated those images, I will not receive that update. Just leave Capture One open so that data can be pulled down immediately. Now, another gotcha to watch for is, let's say that I want to upload these, but I want to watermark them because I'm afraid that somebody's going to steal them or whatever. 
Uh, so what you can do is you can actually change the way that these are uh, uploaded or as to say the recipe that's followed. So if we go to our recipe section, for example, and I have, let's say a portfolio link here. Uh, now, if you have it link uh, activated and it's highlighted, then those will actually be used. So if we go down to this one here, um, I don't see it because you have to hit proofing now. That's a change uh, that Capture One has added because they enjoy us clicking. Uh, I can go down and say grab the handle for my uh, watermark here. Now, when I export these things and I create a new share, then all of these will now uh, honor this highlighted recipe. So this is a way for you to actually use the different watermarks or different aspects of certain uh, recipes uh, when they're uploaded to the proofing site. A couple of things to be aware of here though, is that once this is shared up to that site, um, if you change the position of the watermark, if you change the opacity or uh, anything along that lines, the site will not update with those new changes. Also be aware that the size of the watermark may differ violently depending on the output resolution uh, up there and your recipe. I found this to be extremely inconsistent and I'm sure this will get worked through, but right now the watermarks tend to be very small, especially high resolution source images, regardless of whatever the recipe is kicking out. Now, if you notice a resume sharing button here uh, from time to time, that's because you've closed Capture One and when you reopen it, it's asking if you would like to go ahead and resynchronize what is up uh, online versus what you have in your local session. Uh, so it will go ahead and refresh, add, remove images, and uh, any changes you've made to the recipes that can be reflected will then be resynchronized. So it's a nice way if you kind of walk away. But, but remember, if your session expires before you come back and resume the session, uh, any client grading and or color, uh, color ratings they've given will be discarded. So you won't have that information. Uh, but otherwise, I think this is a really nice, elegant, simple solution uh, for certain situations. And you kind of have to decide how you're going to use this in your own workflow. Uh, for example, I do not use this as an in-person sales tool. Um, I do use it when I'm working uh, with a product team remotely. But for headshots, if they're already in the studio, I just use my laptop and we, we handle business right then and figure out what it is they'd like to keep or we just keep shooting. So uh, that's the way that I run my business and obviously uh, it may differ from yours. If you have any ideas on how you would use this feature in your own studio and you think they'd be creative, uh, leave a comment below. I'd be really interested in hearing what you're doing with it. So until next time, everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.